What's up guys, welcome back to Pat Outdoors. Today we're gonna be working on my Yasma IM10, which is the only 48 volt electric dirt bike I have left here in the garage. I have quite a few 60 volt, 72, 88 volt bikes here. So that makes this bike the slowest one I currently have and it's time to change that. As you can see, I've already made a couple modifications to my IM10, but mostly cosmetic. I've got the body kit from Yasma and a supermoto wheel and tire set from Ride or Die. These were actually originally designed for a 2DO, but they fit perfectly on this bike. Just gotta make sure you use the right spacers. I also turned up the power a little bit by connecting a Bluetooth dongle on the stock fire driver controller and changing up a few tune settings. But the stock 48 volt battery on this bike is pretty limiting as far as total power output. Now this is my 2DO Salil, which I've been modifying quite a bit for the last year or so. Besides the aesthetics, suspension, and supermotos, I've got a Soshin motor, a Mord 72 volt 20 amp hour battery with a 250 amp peak output, far driver controller, this is a ND72530, and we have this pretty much maxed out to the battery's capability, which is 200 line amps continuous, making this a 14 kilowatt bike. Now my goal with the Yasma IN10 is to make it even faster than that bike. Not sure how fast we're gonna end up going with the Yasma quite yet, but I am shooting for 80 miles per hour. Now I'm not just gonna turn up the power on the Yasma to make it go faster, but we're also gonna be working on the aesthetics and the suspension. The first thing I noticed with the Tudio once we got to the 65, 70 mile an hour range is the front end felt really unstable. I actually ended up installing the Ride or Die 45, 48 fork kit on this. Since the stock fork was simply way too soft, at least for my weight, I'm 188 pounds currently. And these bikes are kind of made for kids. They are also not designed to go 70 something miles per hour. So if you're planning on doing so, at least install the upgraded suspension and tighten up the front end a little bit. So it's a little bit sketchy at those higher speeds. Now for a suspension fork upgrade, I'm using the adjustable fork tubes from Ride or Die. These are, I believe, designed for the Tudio as well, but should be the same exact fitment for the Yasma. The difference with these is it has a adjustment point on the top. So we should actually be able to slow down the rebound and tighten up the compression. Unlike the stock fork tubes, which have zero adjustment whatsoever. Installation should be relatively simple since we're just gonna swap out the fork tubes themselves, unlike the 4548 kit we did on the Tudio where we swapped out the whole clamp assembly. I'm just gonna remove the brake caliper and disconnect the brake line from the left tube and loosen the bolts on the upper and lower triple tree clamps and swap out the fork tubes. I'm actually just gonna reuse the original fork tube guard since I like the brake line bracket on the Yasma better. Same bolt pattern at the bottom anyway. I am gonna remove the Yalta decals though. I just realized that the aftermarket adjustable fork tube is about an inch shorter than the original one, which is gonna lower the front end of the bike. So I'm gonna order a shorter rear shock to balance out the ride height front and rear. So this bike's gonna be lower overall, which should also help with high speed stability. Good thing I did not set this bike up for trail use. Front axle still has a decent amount of grease on there. My new custom seat cover from Bolts and Volts finally came in. Definitely throwing that on next. I think it's gonna look super clean compared to this stock bright red color.
So the seat cover that I just got from Bolts and Bolts is not a universal one. It is actually custom tailored for the Yasma IN10. Should also fit the Latinzu EM5. And I think it also fits the Strike Shadow and the Ionic Moto bikes that are similar. You could take off the original seat cover, but there is actually enough slack in the material of how we made it. So you can actually just put it on top and check out how well that fits even without any staples in place yet. And the outer edges are actually cut out. So it goes around the factory seat base. I think this is my fourth seat cover from Bolts and Bolts. He also made some for my ETM RTR, my Tudio, and he's actually making one for my KTM right now. What I really like is they allow you to pick out whatever color combo you want, along with the stitching, whatever logo you want on there. You can either go with this grippier material, or he also offers leather and other options. Since the seat cover is already custom fit for whatever bike you order it for, the install is very simple. You pretty much just put it over your stock seat and staple it in place. Unfortunately, I don't have an air stapler. I pretty much just use this manual one with some shallow 250 staples. And here's a closer look at the cover installed on the factory seat. Here's what the bottom side looks like. Considering I'm not a professional by any means, I think it looks pretty clean. Let's go throw this on the bike. Yeah, the black gripper style material with the gray stripes and the red stitching looks so much better than that stock red seat. And I think it goes really well with this plastic set. If you are looking for a custom seat cover for your bike, whether or not it's a Yasma, a Razor, a Tudio, or ETM RTR, I highly recommend checking out Bolts and Bolts. I'll have their website linked in the description below. All right, let's start getting to some of the power mods. Look at that. So this is the new Social motor that's designed specifically for the Veltinzu EM5, but it should have the same fitment for the Yasma. It came with a 10 tooth front sprocket, much fatter phase wires, all sensor connector, a couple spacers for the bracket. This does seem noticeably larger than the original motor that's currently installed. Let's go take it out for comparison. I'm gonna start by removing the stock 48 volt battery, and then we're gonna remove the side cover so we can get access to the motor. Disconnect the chain and start unplugging the connectors from the factory controller. Yeah, we can't really access much from above. We're definitely gonna have to take the front cover off and just remove the controller altogether. Oh, the stock sprocket is an 11 tooth, so stepping down to 10 should increase the torque quite a bit. It's just three long bolts that go through the frame. You just gotta hold the other side down with a six mil Allen. If it's spinning in place on this side, then you can pull out each bolt one by one and take the spacers off. There's also another spacer on the back side of the motor. So it goes like this from the other side. Shorter spacer, longer spacer on this side, and then the nut to secure it. At this point, the motor's just sitting there. I'm just gonna disconnect the phase wires and the hall sensor connector from the stock controller, and then we'll remove both the controller and the motor. Yeah, front cover definitely has to come off as well. Let's disconnect the main connector. I'm just gonna leave the battery connector on since we're gonna use a completely different power supply plug for the new battery. And 
that's how easy it is to remove the stock controller. The phase wires are already removed for the motor. Now the only connector left to unplug is the one for the hall sensor, which is the blue one. And here's a side-by-side -side comparison of the social motor compared to the stock one. The stock one is super tiny versus the Soshin one, as far as width at least, and it weighs a lot less. So you know right away that the Soshin is packed with much heavier duty components inside. Though that was kind of a tight fit for the stock motor to come out of the frame. So I'm kind of nervous to put in this bigger motor. It's definitely gonna be a tighter fit, but I'm sure it's gonna be worth it. Look at how fat the new phase wires are in comparison to the stock ones. That just kind of gives you the idea of how much more power we're going to be able to deliver with this new Socian motor installed. If you want to get more details on all the specs for the new Socian motor, I'll have a link to their listing in the description below. You can also get yourself 5% off any Socian products or ride or die products or even a Yasma IN10 itself with discount code PADOUTDOORS. Well, let's see if it fits without any issues. Huh. Try rotating it. No, it's definitely not gonna fit that way. I'm gonna try out an idea I got from one of Southern Evolt or Michael Wright's videos on YouTube, which is to remove the skid plate and feed the motor through the center of the frame. Yo, that worked perfectly. So it seems like we don't even need any spacers on the right side of the bike. We just feed the bolts through and put the stainless steel spacers provided with the Socian motor between the frame and the left side of the motor. The hardest part really is just getting the first bolt through to line up with the spacers. Well, once you get one bolt in, the rest is pretty straightforward from there. So bottom two bolts and spacers fit perfectly, though I am gonna have to shave a little bit of material on the third spacer for the top mounting point, maybe one or two millimeters. That should give me just enough clearance to get it through between the frame and the motor bracket. I barely took off any material, maybe about two millimeters, which happens to be just the right amount for the spacer to fit perfectly between the motor and the frame. Since we stepped down from an 11 tooth to a 10 tooth front sprocket, there is a little bit of added slack in the chain. So I'm gonna slide the rear axle back and adjust the chain tension. Also gotta make sure that you're adjusting the rear axle blocks evenly left and right to make sure that the rear wheel is tracking perfectly straight from the swing arm. That's just right about where I want it. Usually if you're using this motor with a far driver controller or the stock controller and you gotta do the self-learning procedure, you wanna leave the chain off or just take it off the front sprocket. But we're not gonna be using a far driver controller on this bike and my new controller does not require the chain to be removed. I kind of don't wanna stick the right cover on because I really like how the Socian motor looks. I almost wanna cut out a hole here just to show the side of the motor. Let me know what you guys think. 
Should I cut a hole here to show the suction motor or should I leave it as is? Since the cover does fit perfectly over the motor, maybe even with a quarter inch clearance all around, I just think it'll look kind of dope with the suction logo over here. So at this point, I could put the stock far driver controller in and put a new 72 volt battery in so we can test out the power output of the Soshin motor. But unfortunately, the stock controller only has a max output of 70 line amps, which will bring it just over 5,000 watts. And I'm shooting for big power on this bike. So we're just gonna skip over that whole step and not waste time. We're just gonna jump straight to the big controller upgrade, which I unfortunately don't have time to complete today since it's my turn to take care of my daughter. And this controller that I'm putting in has never been installed on a Yasma or a Veltinzu before. So it's definitely gonna take quite a bit of time. Comment below if you can guess what kind of controller we're installing on this bike on the next video. The only clues I can give you are it costs almost as much as this bike and it has a peak power output of 1100 phase amps. If you wanna keep up with this Yasma IN10 project, make sure you subscribe to this channel and turn your bell notification on. If you're interested in checking out any of the parts that we used on today's project, I'll have the full build list in the description below. If you enjoyed today's video, do me a favor and hit that like button. If you like this kind of content, make sure you subscribe to this channel. But this is going to be it for today. Thank you for watching.